Hi there, welcome to Mini Math Lessons with Karen. And today I am working with a scientific calculator from Casio called the ClassWiz or the FX991EX calculator. Scientific calculator, but it does so much more and we'll be exploring more of this later. But today we're gonna really just kind of focus on a couple um, options here, ways you could use this with students to help them look for patterns, uh, fractions, decimals, and exponents. So I'm going to be using, here's the emulator, so this is the emulator software, and I'm going to be using uh, just a couple buttons that I want to point out here. I'm going to use the shift key, which if you look it's yellow, so it will allow me to get into the yellow functionality. So we're going to be going into factors here when we get into exponents. I'm going to be using the power button here where you can raise something to any power. Here's an x squared and also x cubed, but this allows you to raise it to whatever power you want. I'm going to be using the fraction. Uh, the nice thing about this calculator is it allows you to enter numbers in standard form. So an actual fraction looks like a fraction and not just its decimals form. But we're going to be working with this toggle button here as well, where if you do get an answer in standard form, but you want to see its decimal equivalent, you can quickly toggle back and forth between that. And if you look up here above in the yellow, which means I'm using the shift key, I'm going to be um, converting also between um, improper fractions and mixed numbers. So these are sort of the where we're focusing today on today's activities. And I have two activities and they're really just more discovery and kind of exploring patterns. It's sort of a how-to you can add on to this. I definitely would, but it's helping students make a connection between the decimal and the fraction equivalents, as well as equivalent fractions. You know, how they all simplified it the same thing and what, how does that happen? What, what common element do they have? Do they have a common factor? That type of thing. So basically to enter a decimal, it's easy enough. You just would click 0.3 and I'm just looking over here. And when I hit the equal sign, Notice it gives me that decimal in its fractional form, which is a nice connection for students, especially if they're learning place value. So 3 tenths as a decimal is 3 over 10 as a fraction. Nice connection. And if I want to convert back, here's this little toggle button, S standard to de decimal. I can go back and forth between them. So you want students kind of making that connection. Okay, so the place value of decimal is where I'm getting my denominator of my fraction. But then there are other numbers that are also worth 3 tenths. So let's explore some of them. So if I enter the fraction, so here's where I'm using my fraction button. I'm entering the numerator, clicking the, the fraction button, and entering my denominator. And I'll show you another way you can do it as well. I want to hit equals. Oh my gosh, how did I get 3 tenths as, as well as the last one? because this doesn't look like 3 tenths. So how does it end up being equivalent? And so then this is where you really want them looking for patterns. Okay, so 6, 20, 3 over 10. Well, 6 divided by 2 is 3. Well, oh wow, 20 divided by 2 is 10. So maybe that's where this equivalency comes into. So even though they look different, they have the same 3 tenths value. So are there other numbers I can come up with? And so we have some in the activity, obviously. We have 20, oh, actually, let me... I'm going to show you how you can use this fraction button differently. I could hit the fraction button first and just enter my numbers. And I would need to use the arrow key to get down into that denominator. But So you can either hit it while you're doing things or after. But now watch, oh my gosh, 3 tenths again. Where's that coming from? Well, if I remember from my 6 20th, I divided by 2. So is there a number I can divide both of these by that brings me back to this 3 tenths? And yeah, 7 and 70 divided by 7 is 10. So they're starting to make that connection. So you could explore. You could have students find those on their own. Um, and we can explore a little bit more. So you'll notice this activity is just giving them some starting points, basically. And then they're going to explore equivalency between decimals and fractions and different um, fractions that have the same um, equivalency, those types of things, and they can make them up and they're going to write a conclusion. Um, and same thing when we then get into uh, division and, and improper fractions. So this one's a division problem. So if we, let's clear this out, if we divide, I'm getting my fractional answer and here we're, here's where we're noticing that uh, this numerator is larger than my denominator. And if I toggle to the decimal, oh, I have three holes and 75 tenths. Well, how did that work? And here's where, if you notice above in yellow, I could change it to its mixed number version. So I'm going to hit the shift first, 
and then this toggle button and there's my three and three quarters so again lots of explorations um, of, of this type of how can I compare this where did this come from what factors are being involved I could have also done the 30 divided by 8 as a fraction to begin with so I could have done 30 hit the fraction button and did 30 eighths and got the same result. So lots of ways that you can really explore number sense with students and have them look for the patterns very quickly and easy because we have this standard notation in this scientific calculator. So let's look at the other um, activity that I was exploring in this particular mini math lesson. And that is one that has to do with powers. Um, same idea, you're, you're you're helping students figure out what is actually happening when I am, in this case, we're doing operations, multiplication of, of numbers with the same base and different exponents up here. So if we do this, and this is where this button comes into play, the button that is a power button. So I'm going to enter 5, and I'm going to hit this button, put my exponent in. So in this case, it's 4. Then my multiplication, and then my next one, which is 5 to the 3rd. Right. So then I hit equals and it gives me the actual calculated out um, product, right? But then we have this really cool button right here. So notice it's in yellow. It's above this. Um, I'm not quite sure what that button is called, but it's above this button. And so I'm going to hit shift and factor and I see the exponent exponential value of this. And so I'm like, oh, well, that's interesting. Five to the fourth times five to the third is 5 to the 7th, or if I go back to where I was, I get the actual number, right? So that's making that connection. What's happening when I multiply powers that have the same base? Well, it looks like I'm adding the exponents and I'll get the same answer. So you're going to explore that, and there's lots, of, there's only a couple in the activity, but you want to go add more in and have students explore more so they're kind of getting that idea that when I multiply powers of the same base I simply adding my exponents and then you can uh, you know you can keep on exploring you'll notice there's a lot of that going on um, and here you can have what's a power to a power so let's try that one um, so I've got seven to the third and notice I'm, I'm using the right arrow to get out of that exponential position before I add the next thing in but now I'm gonna raise that whole parentheses to an exponent so I'm going to hit equal again, and you know, obviously I get a the 7 to the 3rd raised to the second power. But now we go back into that factor, and let's see what it looks like. Oh, it's 7 to the 6th. So unlike when I was multiplying, um, multiplying when I'm raising an exponential to a power, I actually multiply the exponents. But it makes sense because this is really 7 to the 3rd times 7 to the 3rd, which we add and we get 6. So all of these connections are what you're really trying to help students figure out all the patterns. And so this is just a quick, really nice way to help students get a sense of numbers very quickly and easy using the class pad, um, not the class pad, the class with uh, FX 991 calculator because of the ability that it can toggle between a standard and a decimal and can really has a really nice display window compared to most scientific calculators so you can really explore things. We're going to um, look at more things with this calculator but this was just a quick intro so have fun.